right. We are back. No. Nope. On go. now. Okay. So, th basically, the, the purpose of um, this discussion tonight is um, to kind of let the the public know, um, basically, what the process is from here with respect to Pulte. The uh, um, the um, it was supposed to be a 60-day um, um, due diligence period. It wound up being more like a, a one-year due diligence period, but it has ended, uh, and Pulte is moving forward. So just to um, give everybody an idea of, of where the process goes from here, um, and, and, and somewhat specifically talking about the process of the 100-foot um, neighborhood buffer. Uh, and, and the determination of that. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, John, just to kind of bring us through that whole process. And there, there are a couple of components to that. Um, now that the due diligence has stopped, uh, the uh, Pulte needs to apply to the planning board for a special permit under the cluster bylaw. It will be the first time the planning board has held a hearing on that issue, so uh, it will be making new ground, if you will. Um, the, they have not filed yet. Um, the special permit process will be uh, a public hearing process before the planning board uh, under the zoning bylaw. It will be their job to determine whether the project proposed by Pulte complies with the zoning bylaw. Uh, if they decide that it does, their option is to grant the, ap the permit according to the application as filed or to grant it with conditions. Uh, if they decide that it does not comply with the zoning bylaw, um, it depends upon the extent to which they decide that it doesn't comply. They could grant a special permit with conditions that some of which address the bylaw and say, with these changes, your proposal complies with the town's bylaw, or they could deny. Um, the special permit process is um, geared more to approval than it is to denial. For example, in contrast, you have the variance process. Variance is by definition in the statutes and the law are difficult to get because they have statutory standards that are sometimes difficult to, to meet. Special permits are more discretionary with the special permit granting authority. In this case, that's the planning board. Your board of appeals also has special permit granting authority, but not in this situation. So it is a public hearing process. It could be lengthy. Um, the, uh, at this point, it's difficult to predict how that will go. I anticipate it will be a, a, a very involved public hearing process for a number of reasons. Uh, as I said earlier, it's the first application under this bylaw. It's a very ambitious project, uh, very important, very, as you remember from the time of the award of the uh, uh, contract, if you will, to Pulte. It's, it's, understandably generated a lot of public interest and so it should be a full and fair public hearing process. Right. Um, the issue of the, um, we have a, a separate legal issue of the uh, 100 foot buffer so called. Um, the proposal that was uh, accepted by the then Board of Selectmen has been referenced in the um, purchase and sale agreement between the parties. The, the uh, process after the, you may recall it was a procurement process, several comp uh, requests for proposals was put out, several entities responded to that proposal. The result of that was that the then Board of Selectmen awarded the, uh, accepted the proposal of Pulte. Pulte gave a couple of proposals. Uh, the Board of Selectmen accepted um, one of their proposals that Plan they identified C, as Plan C, right. yes. And uh, there is a purchase and sale, and as the chairman noted, there was a due diligence period, which is 
not uncommon in a project of this magnitude. Right. Uh, as you also noted in a recent letter uh, dated July 20th, Pulte informed the Board of Selectmen, or technically the Selectmen sitting as trustees under the will of Governor Stoughton, Pulte informed the trustees that the due diligence period is over and that they intended to proceed with the process to purchase. Well, the next step to, for that process is to uh, get a permit from a special, apply for a special permit from the Board of Appeals. I should mention briefly, just for the public's benefit, that before we got to this stage, uh, because the subject property is the so-called Governor Stoughton property, is held by the selectmen as, is, it's, it was given to the town of Milton for the benefit of the poor of Milton by former Governor William Stoughton. Uh, that land, in effect, is held by the town in trust for that purpose, and you, the Board of Selectmen, are the trustees for that. Right. So in order for this process to begin, and in order for the uh, uh, agreement to be signed, two approvals were necessary. One was from the Attorney General of the Commonwealth. The Attorney General's Public Charities Division, if you will, overlooks, oversees uh, public charities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. This land, in effect, is a public charity because it's held by the um, town and trust, as I mentioned, under that will from 1701. Um, the second approval that was necessary was approval from the Norfolk County Probate Court because um, I mentioned that the land was given to the town of Milton to hold and trust for the benefit of the poor of Milton. Well, to allow this project to go forward would, in effect, deviate from the terms of that will. And there's a legal process with the, the Latin name Cypre, uh, two words, C-Y-P-R-E-S. What that means is a deviation from the will. And the legal process to accomplish that is to get approval from either the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court or the local probate court. Uh, we chose to go for, to the local probate court for that. It was not an easy process. Understandably, there are a lot of issues to hammer out. Uh, the Attorney General um, asked for, um, demanded, I guess, or asked for, depending on your point of view, a number of conditions because of, among other things, questions about the viability of the project and the ability of uh, Pulte to develop it. That took longer than anyone anticipated. It's just the way it went. That uh, They considered it to be an important process. So look, project that required that level of scrutiny. Those two approvals were, were obtained. Uh, then the purchase and sale agreement was entered into that I mentioned earlier. And um, that purchase and sale agreement did have the due diligence period. That's expired. And as you mentioned earlier, in a July 20, 2015 letter, Pulte informed you as trustees, we're ready to go. We'll start the process. That will be the special permit process. I alluded to earlier. The special permit by statute is, in, in essence, um, a process by which a, a property owner can, can obtain approval to do something that's not permitted as of right. Well, this development, proposed development, is under a bylaw that's not a matter of right. It's a special permit. And as I mentioned earlier, it's a discretionary approval. The planning board doesn't have to grant it. But um, it is a discretionary process, but it, it's generally intended that uh, if you can satisfy the zoning bylaw, you, you generally get either approval or approval with conditions, but it's not required. And being a special permit, a planning board, a special permit granting authority can deny a request as long as it's a reasonable denial. So that's the legal process they have to follow. Um, as you mentioned, there was that there is a separate issue, which is um, an issue that has arisen under the purchase and sale agreement. The proposal that the then select, the then trustees accepted by Pulte uh, is the so-called Plan C that the chairman referred to earlier. That Plan C was, on the assumption that the acreage is uh, 34 acres, they would develop 30 of those 34 acres, 
and the other four acres would be retained by the town of Milton. That's the proposal the trustees accepted rather than, for example, a proposal to develop both lots. Uh, we, the town of Milton, retain the four lots. So that, to say it another way, they are developing most but not all of the Governor Stoughton property. Mm -hmm. That proposal, that development proposal for the 30 acres of land uh, was to build uh, 20, to develop 23 lots on the 30 acre parcel using the cluster zoning bylaw that I referred to earlier. Um, and I'll just read a couple of sentences from that. The homes will be designed utilizing classic New England architecture to complement the historic nature of the property. The homes will be constructed using state-of-the-art construction techniques and materials. The next sentence is the issue the chairman referred to earlier. We will maintain 100-foot buffers at a minimum from existing residential neighborhoods. They went on to say we will create a plan that is sensitive to the immediate environment and strives to maximize open space while respecting the natural topography, wetlands, and overall vegetation of the site. Um, that issue has create, created some concern uh, both among the public and among Pulte. And in essence, the issue is this. What is meant by the words 100-foot buffers at a minimum from existing residential neighborhoods? The purchase and sale agreement doesn't define that term. Um, there is no memo or side agreement or any written document that tells us what that meant. Um, at this point, the status of that issue is that the uh, developer, the proposed developer, Pulte, is saying, uh, let me back up a second. What I should add to that is with their proposal, uh, Pulte submitted a plan. It wasn't a fully surveyed plan. It was more in the nature of a sketch plan that showed the proposed development. It was small scale on a letter sized piece of paper. So for laymen like us, the detail is hard to I believe it's 100 foot scale or one inch is under foot. It's a small drawing, in other words. But their, their explanation of what they meant by their proposal was that wording that I just read, the 100 foot buffers, plus the plan. Um, it does not have dimensions on it, but has a scale, although it's a small drawing. They say what we meant by that was we would separate the, <coughs> the residential, the homes on the lots, the, the homes that we build on the Governor Stoughton property from homes abutting on Countryside Lane by 100 feet. Um, the counter position to that is that Buffer is usually often meant to mean separation from two properties, you know, a hundred foot separation from the property line to the workplace development. Not, say it another way, not house to house, but lot line to house. So the counter position to that would be what that should mean is the hundred foot buffer should be a hundred foot separation, if you will from the property lines that divide the new homes from the countryside lane home. That property line and the 100 foot should go from that property line to the houses. So as of now, there's no agreement on that issue. But it was addressed in a couple of contexts, including at a public meeting that you, the chairman, uh, called with neighborhood representatives. It wasn't a board meeting, it was you. Right. And it was discussed for at length and uh, a good faith discussion. A Pulte representative was there. Uh, you were there on behalf of the trustees. And I think it was clear from then and the status is still that th there's not a clear agreement between the trustees and the uh, developer, the Pulte, as to what that means. Well, I guess we have a bunch of things. I mean, the, yeah. the, the, you're right, there was not a clear understanding between the, I guess to back up a little bit, when we crafted the purchase and sale agreement, I, I was the only one currently on the board that you know, was there at the time. Um, there, there, was, there was very little discussion. I mean, the 100 foot 
neighborhood buffer was clearly in there. It was incorporated. You can read it. It's you know in one of the addendums on page it's de uh, page 16 of 24. It's item 10, and, and it's in there. Uh, but there was never a lot of discussion about it. It just kind of got in there. We all said, well, what's the problem? That's what we want. And, you know, but I'm not sure anybody ever ever actually focused on what a hundred foot meant. Um, but nonetheless, it's in there. And, and you are correct that I don't think there's um, um, consensus among the, the selectmen of the trustees as to what it means at this point. And certainly there was no consensus with the um, neighbors on countryside or, uh, yes. uh, or any of the other abutters. So, so we had a disagreement. Um, we, we did ask Pulte to reach out and talk to the neighbors. They said there, there would be a time to do that, but it, this was not the time that they were still in negotiations in the due diligence period, and you know, the, the time would be when they actually um, went for the special permit process. That would be the time. So in the interim, um, I had some discussions, um, and, and I wanted to make that it more, I didn't want to have a, a, another giant meeting with 30 or 40 people there. I, I wanted to have discussions one-on-one -on -one with the directly affected people. So I did sit down with Pulte and ask them, well, if you were going to mitigate this, what you know, what would you do? And I will certainly bring it to those abutters, and I will listen to their comments, and and that's what I did. Um, you know, Pulte had put forth, um, you know, they they would basically build a, a green wall, a, a vegetated wall, to separate the uh, countryside um, properties from the Governor Stoughton properties. Um, that wall would be. Uh, I believe 10 feet uh, thick. Um, they would also, uh, you know, not not build within another to, to make it basically 15 feet um, in total. Uh, they indicated what could and could not be built on the properties. What they considered a structure. So there would be no big buildings. There would be no additions that would be within 100 feet of the uh, house behind them um, and uh, the size of any uh, auxiliary structures like sheds or um, playgrounds and that kind of thing. So we did present that to the neighbors, the, the countryside neighbors that would sit down with us, uh, only two of which did. Um, and we still could get no consensus. Um, so we basically went back to Pulte and said there is no consensus. Pulte made the decision to go forward. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, and the purchase and sale agreement, you can go through the rest of that, does have very explicit um, directions as to who's responsible from here. And, and it's not the trustees. Um, the, the responsibility lies, lies with actually the building commissioner in terms of determining uh, those four items in the addendum as to who, as to does their plan meet those restrictions or not? And it, it, the decision clearly rests with them. Yes, the, the four conditions you're referring to are the ones I read earlier. Yes. And the, the uh, by the way, I, I will add, uh, I was town council then when this was process was starting and I participated in the negotiations and you're correct that this issue of the 100-foot buffer was not a issue that was discussed much. There were a lot of other issues, both purely legal, semi-legal, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, political. There, there were a lot, the Attorney General, I mentioned all that. There were a lot of other issues that dominated the trustees' time, and for whatever reason, this wasn't really a topic of a lot of discussions. But here we are today. And, um, the, the, the way the agreement that was agreed to, the, the provision of the purchase and sale agreement says, the buyer shall submit to the building commission, Milton Building Commission for review the buyer's plans which show the design and architectural style of the buildings to be constructed on the premises. And then there's a time period in which he used to respond. They did that, and the building commissioner 
Mr. Prindek, informed them by letter on December 3rd, 2014, I do not agree that the plan demonstrates compliance with Part 10D of the agreement. The 100-foot buffer zone must be completely within the confines of the subject parcel. The plan seems to include private land of various abutters to achieve the 100-foot buffer zone. So as of now, that's the status of the 100-foot. So, so in essence, the building commissioner has thrown it back at Pulte to, yes. to say, please show me how this meets the restriction. I should mention that, that at that meeting, this was obviously a big topic of discussion at the public meeting you convened. And uh, a Pulte representative was there, listened, and did say at the end, in essence, that we agree that this is an issue. The time to discuss it is once we apply to the planning board and we are open to discussing that with uh, the public, with the neighbors. And in, to say it another way, uh, their response and <coughs> request to meet with the neighbors at that time was that it's premature. We, 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 and what, we, what the Pulte representative was telling you as chairman and the members of the public with there is once we apply for our special permit in the public hearings, that's, that's when we address these concerns. So there's a hope that there will be a good faith attempt to resolve this issue during the, the planning board process. Mm -hmm. It's not technically a zoning issue. It's technically a contractual issue, but it's obviously part of the process. And Right, and, and, and clearly, in terms of those four restrictions, it, at least three of them um, are, are clearly within the purview also of the, the, the site review um, that the planning board would do anyways in terms of, of the styling and, and all that other. It's, it's questionable whether the 100-foot neighborhood buffer is within the purview of the planning board or not, but it certainly is within the purview of the building commissioner. Yes. By legal document. And hopefully that will be addressed during this process. I mean, you can compartmentalize, but the reality is if this project is to go forward, it's going to have to be addressed because uh, right. it's given where we are right now. Yep. So, I mean, yep. I think a logical approach to that would be, okay, it may not be purely a zoning issue, but it's part of the process to get right. what we want. So let's try to work it out with the... With the and, and that could be addressed either by being worked out between... Um, between the trustees, between the abutters, uh, the planning board, yes. or barring that, Pulte can always litigate it if they so choose. Hopefully not. Hopefully <laughs> not. Yeah, we pay enough legal fees anyway. So but much as we like to keep Murphy Hesse to me in yeah, business. But, <laughs> but seriously, that's that's hopefully not the way it'll go. I right. Mean, you want to have a you know a, a good relationship here with the project obviously I mean, it's the biggest project that any of us have seen mm -hmm. during our lifetimes so right. you'd like it to start off on the right foot with yep. a cooperative relationship and at least from what they've said they will be willing to approach it that way so. mm -hmm. but anyway that's where it is now that's where the 100 foot buffer zone is and uh, issue is and uh, the special permit process should get going Right. Mm -hmm. We should be getting some answers in the near future. And, and, and at this point, is is it your opinion that if if the trustees were to take any action to try and do anything to negate this deal, that we'd be in violation of the purchase and sale agreement? Well, I don't know that we'd be in Possibly. I, it would just create a controversy that I'm not sure would be productive at this point. It could right. lead to a lawsuit yep. or it could mean to, uh, other, at, the end of, at the other end of the spectrum, it could mean that the developer packs his bags and leaves, uh, either of which is a particularly good result. So. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I, I think it, I would recommend that just hold off on that and see how it unfolds Fo follow the, the course yes. of the, yes. the agreements yes. that we have in place. And I'm not sure a lawsuit benefits anyone at this point, any kind of legal action. Yeah. <laughs> so ultimately, we're in a wait and see mode right now. Yes, in my opinion, yes. And let's just be hopeful that uh, yeah. some common ground here. 
I mean, the tough thing about this is, um, you know, no matter what happens, I mean, if if it doesn't come to fruition, then we're back to square one, unfortunately, and we go through the whole RFP process again. Well, the one thing we know we can't do if, if this falls through is do nothing because we'll have the Attorney General yes. back on our doorstep uh, saying that we're in violation of the uh, terms of the will um, by not providing for the poor of Milton sufficiently. Um, so we will have to go back out. We will have to file another yes. uh, complaint and go through that entire process again. Yeah, that's correct. I, I think it's also worth noting that <coughs> this particular pros, proposal came in under the uh, cluster zoning bylaw, but there are other options there. Uh, there are ways to build either under, under a conventional subdivision or as of right, I suppose, too. So, I mean, this is not the only building option on the property. It just happens to be what this uh, experienced developer presented. But right. There are other ways to develop that property, some of which could end up with more houses or fewer houses, depending on the approach of the uh, successful bidder. Correct. Yep. Um, yeah, the, the attractiveness of the cluster was it, it maintained some open space yes. and the character of the yes. of the land, and, and that was part of the RFP process. And yes. it was to, to, to the extent possible to maintain the character, of the, the unique character of the property, and, and to a degree, the cluster development gives you a chance yes. to do that. That part of it, a lot of thought went into, as you know. I mean, that, that before this ever got to the stage with the RFP going out. A lot of people spent a lot of good time working on it to reach the result you just described. Mm -hmm. What can we do to try to preserve the, the land to the best of our ability and still satisfy the Attorney General? Right. Because I mean, th this process started quite a while ago. The Attorney General was really anxious for the town to get moving, if you will, because yes, we have the Governor Stilton Fund, as you know, and it does a lot of good, but here's this big parcel of land and here's a fund. Well, you either need to build something on it, sell it and allow something to be built on it, or have some development, you know, have more money available for the benefit of the poor than is just the decent sum, but not a lot, that is dwindling slowly as you help out people in need. By the way, I will mention as an aside, uh, You'd be amazed at how many people express surprise that there's even a need for a fund for the poor in Milton. There, there seems to be this, not necessarily Milton people, but other people, they, 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 they're they surprised to find out that there are people in Milton that have financial needs. Well, as you know, well, as like trustees, every other town, yeah, certainly are. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. you know? But you're right. Once we've reached this far, if, God forbid, it were not to go forward, the Attorney General would be watching this with or Julia's eye because uh, this is on their radar screen. It is a gift of over 30 acres of land to the town. What, what are you doing with it, folks? You know, how are you benefiting the poor? And, uh, as, as you probably remember from the historical thing, at one time it was a wood lot and they had a, a, uh, a uh, arms house uh, for, for sick people there. So right. they, they, in the ancient days, they were it doing used, it yeah. in Martin and had the farm <coughs> was being developed and housed poor people. Well, as society evolved, uh, the change, but right. it still doesn't eliminate the need to utilize the property to the best of our ability to mm -hmm. help out people. And so, that, but I mean, it's really on their radar screen. And, uh, you have a comment, sir? I wasn't even going to say anything on this topic tonight. I just let you <laughs> or John handle it. But I, I, there are there is something that's worth mentioning and. One of the pieces that delayed the due diligence period was the Native American research, the claim of the burial ground. That took an awfully long time. We had to spend some money out of the trust to get an expert out there to weigh in on that issue. But the building commissioner issued his letter back in December when Pulte filed their plan. As it was John or Tom who just read it, you know, saying, I do not agree that the plan complies with Part 10D, going to the 100 foot buffer. The building commissioner's position is clear on this and he has spoken for the town. Because Pulte had a different view, there, were some, there was an effort by the trustees to try to see if there could be a way to come to a resolution on this. And I do think that we should thank Tom for his efforts in the last, I don't know, what was it, three or four months, Tom, to 
meet with the neighbors, the, especially the immediate abutters, who are the ones most affected. There are, there are members, you know, there are neighbors of the Indian Cliff <coughs> Neighborhood Association who are not immediate abutters to this site. You tried to have a smaller group meeting with the countryside lane residents and people who would really be directly impacted. Right. You know, I'll say it again. It's easy for people to throw rocks and to throw stones and say, that we've heard complaints that there's a big conspiracy here that we're trying to undermine, we're doing all this in executive session. That's not the case. I, the, the building commissioner's letter was issued eight months ago. There's been an effort by the trustees to try to come to a resolution and see if an agreement among the abutters, the developer, could be worked out. So, Tom, I do think we should thank you for trying to undertake that effort. Even if only a couple of the abutters met with you, it was still worth worth it, I think, to go through that process to try to bring the parties together, the abutters, the developer, and see what potentially could be done to to um, to try to resolve that. You know, one of the great benefits that Tom brings to this board is creative thinking and thinking outside the box. And whether people think that the solution was good or not, Tom's motivation in trying to meet with abutters was motivated in an effort to try to come to a resolution here and to try to do the right thing. So I, I do think that's worth saying that we're going forward now. This is going to the planning board. Hopefully there'll be a resolution. There will be a public hearing process. Abutters and neighbors can get up and bring the issues that they'd like to the planning board's attention. But um, no, I, I guess we'll leave it at that. Yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. David, have anything else to weigh in on, or no, no? I think appreciate the the, uh, the update, John. Thank you. And thank you, John, for all of your work on this. Thank you. And Bill. Okay, so um, I'll entertain a motion to. Um, um, close the. Um, adjourn. Uh, yeah, adjourn the. Um, <laughs> Uh, Governor Soton, uh, trustees, Governor Soton Fund meeting and uh, enter into executive session. I'll second that. Motion been seconded. Um, everybody in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so now I will propose a motion. Now we're back in open session uh, for the Board of Selectmen. Uh, I'll propose a motion to enter into executive session to conduct contract negotiations. Uh, with non-union personnel and also consider the purchase, exchange, taking lease or value of real property, Zero Central Ave, believing that having such discussion in open session may have a detrimental uh, effect on the bargaining position of the body and to return to open session for the purpose of adjourning. I'll second that. Okay. Um, Ms. Conley? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Mr. Charlie, yes. We are in executive session. <laughs>